welcome to Field Sports Britain, coming to you this week from the People's Republic of China. Coming up, this is where the pheasant and the muntjac comes from, and we'll be looking for both of them. I'll be visiting one of the factories in China that make all the kits we use to attract pigeons, crows and ducks. First, I'm going to this paradise island to look for deer, goats and rabbits. So here's the story. In 2011, we carry a news report saying that the first man in China to own land is a petrochemicals millionaire who has bought a lease on an island near the city of Ningbo, where instead of opening a casino or a shopping centre, he opens a hunting reserve. And this in a country where it is widely believed that hunting is banned. Well, Eric van der Horst gets in touch with us to say he is based in Ningbo and would we like to go? 18 months later, I am at a ferry terminal that may not be up to much, but the boat itself is Chinese industrialist class. So we've left the Chinese mainland behind us and we are heading for we don't know what, but this is the birthplace of Chinese hunting. That's something that's been banned along with guns since 1949. Here it's not only tolerated, it's quite possibly legal. Let's find out. It's a half-hour air-conditioned whiz across the water past dazzling James Bond scenery. We come into port and if you listen carefully you can hear them say it. The plane, boss, the plane. We land, we round a corner and there is the hotel. The following morning we're up early to go stalking. Rosy-fingered dawn is spectacular, the potential for hunting less so. Eric spots a herd of goats, or as he disparagingly calls them, sheep. I reckon that we'll have about a three to four hour stalk up to the sheep that you just uh, just filmed. But besides that, we got quite an experienced and quite good old stalker. As far as I understand, he will call in the sheep when we get near. It'll be something like, sheep, 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 sheep. Which, at which point they will come running in and we've got about 10 minutes to shoot them. <laughs> Just 10 minutes? <laughs> Probably only 10 minutes, yeah. The gamekeeper hands out the firearms to Eric, me and to Mr Yang, a Chinese industrialist. The 12 bore shotguns are marked with the word Ying. There, Yang with Ying. Though it's hard to know if Ying is the make of the gun or its dynasty. We will use three shot cartridges, whatever we are shooting at. Deer, goats, rabbits or pheasants. It is indeed a long walk into the goats. There is plenty of sign of muntjac, but the undergrowth is so thick you would have to be a muntjac to get close to them. We reach the farm animals. Eric and the gamekeeper stalk forward. The goats turn out to be too quick for Eric. Maybe this is not going to be so easy after all. And Eric is cross about another gap between European and Chinese hunting cultures. That was quite an interesting stalk, but I'm not going to shoot a goat at 50 metres or more with a shotgun. I'll give it to our Chinese friend and put him in point again. Another complaint Eric has is the speed at which the Chinese stalk. The fastest stalk I've ever done in my life. When I take over the gun, I slow the pace down significantly. However, apart from the bark of deer and the occasional crashing noise, I see nothing. By 9am the temperature has reached 30 degrees centigrade and the game is lying doggo. But at least the gamekeeper is keeping something, his sense of humour. We head for the hotel where I ask Mr Yang what he thinks of the morning. Uh, he says there are not too much hunt games in this island. Mm -hmm. uh, here uh, the, the hunting is forbidden in, in night, at night and if we, we go out at night we, we may hunt some deer. I also want to know what the Chinese think of shooting and hunting. Do they enjoy it? He says in China, people always do hunting in islands and, and Gobi Desert and the forests. Okay, and what kind of animals do they hunt in China? Uh, in the uh, northern part of China, east northern part of China, people hunt bears and in the Inner Mongolia, people hunt wolves. Okay, and for him, is it about the hunting or the, the eating the food afterwards or the whole the whole thing? That's important for us to understand. 
呃，他说你打猎是为了就是打来吃呢，还是就是就是为了这个，呃，娱乐啊，还是什么？打猎主要是为了娱乐，包括我们现在中国禁枪不能打猎，嗯、主要就是玩枪嘛，对枪感兴趣，嗯、主要玩玩为主。People hunting just for fun, and、uh, we we know that the 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 guns are illegal in in China, and and the people who are interested in that just、uh, due to their interest. Throughout our trip to China, we were unable to find out whether hunting is really banned. Certainly, gun ownership carries a stiff prison sentence in some provinces, but plenty of people own guns, and some we met own them with the permission of the police. Look at the London 2012 Olympics. The Chinese won more medals in the shooting events than any other country. As you can imagine, Eric has strong views about the hunting and about what he would do if he were running the gaff. At the end of our walk, actually, I had the feeling that、um, what we did may actually have been wrong for the Chinese way. So what they do is they walk so fast、yes. that basically they they bump into animals. They march the animals down. Yeah. Yeah. Where we now had to compromise with too many people, and of course the well, let's say the stalker. Yes. Behind us, chopping away、uh, on on branches. And, yeah, and,、uh, I, and yeah. I noticed if we stop to look at where we. Might have seen a muntjac. That was a good opportunity to have a cigarette, especially if the wind was behind us. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Interesting. Yeah,、um, and、uh, and of course the misfires with the shotgun. I mean, it wasn't. Oh yeah. You you have to cope with a lot, don't you? Yeah. But you know, we're sitting at one end of this beautiful beach. It's not a bad place. No, actually, I think it's a really really good place. If you see with the beach,、uh, the hotel is Chinese, but it's comfortable. I love the food. It's really excellent food. It is. And、I love the fact you eat what you shoot immediately. Yeah, that's really good. Brilliant. And, and to be honest, if they would buy two dogs and、um, and a butler call and a butler call, yeah, that that would make all the difference. That would make, yeah, absolutely. And actually, I think it could be a really good mix for with on one end for Chinese people with the bunnies and the and the and the goats, and at the other end for for Western people、uh, or. Who, who have more stalking experience? Yes, but they they need to learn a lot. They do. They need to learn about Munjak stalking. Yeah. Well, shall we go back in for a cheeky rice wine?、Um, that might be a very good idea. And then perhaps take the surf <laughs> later. Late afternoon, before dinner, we head off again. This time after bunnies, which we've seen near the hotel and which looks suspiciously unnervous. Our new Chinese friend limbers up by practicing on a nearby flagpole. It's only a few yards, and we come upon a rabbit. Another twenty yards, and blow me, another rabbit lurking behind some rushes, but otherwise oblivious to our presence. Eric shoots, misses, then goes to see if he can flush it out. It is wild enough to have gone into hiding. Further up the path, it's my turn to shoot and bring down another mighty rabbit. Okay, well I can't show you too much, but a two-man team from Europe is、uh, one all versus China at the moment. As well as rabbits, the island offers Chinese bayberries. These are really, really nice. With the scores running even, Mr. Yang edges ahead with first one rabbit and then another. But after we have one each, Eric and I are not quite so keen on the sporting side of Chinese rabbit shooting. The Chinese may have a lot to learn from us about shooting, but we have plenty to learn from them about eating. Everything we shot or caught on our trip, we ate immediately: meat, feet, guts, backbone, and all. And I might have come home smelling like a Chinese restaurant, but it was delicious. Food for the Chinese is a social event that takes place three times a day. Whenever possible, it involves beer, rice wine, and French brandy. Here's Mr. Yang showing his skills as a calligrapher, writing Field Sports Channel in Chinese, literally hunting the weird. If the hordes sweep in from the east, this is our new logo. Then Mr. Yang, partly fueled by rice wine, shows how he will disable Eric when that day comes. The Golden Sand Bay Hunting Resort is expensive by Chinese standards, but much of the cost is tied up in the price of hiring the boat. One night there comes to two hundred pounds a person, including ferry, bed, board, and two outings shooting. Also, the price goes up significantly once the manager decides you are rich. If you want to find out more and you either speak Mandarin or you don't mind Google Translate's version, have a look at nbhaiyang.com. Another hunting resort advertising in China is the Oriental International Hunting Park in Shaanxi Province, west of Beijing. Visit east-hunt.com. What do you reckon? I'm not sure. Do you think we shoot it anyway? Yeah, give it a try. Okay. 
And now it's over to David on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Britain News. The Netherlands has 300,000 grey lag geese. The Environment Department of a Dutch university says that 380,000 geese need to be gassed over the next five years to bring that number down to 100,000. It costs around 18 euros to gas each goose. Holland banned goose shooting in 1981, except under license. Our government says, well, when you hunt them, the next problem you have is what are you going to do with those animals? And that's more or less one of the reasons why I wrote a book about it. So how do you get it back in the food circuit? And you can watch more of that interview by clicking on the link. Now, Swiss MPs have voted against the ban on shooting stray cats. They rejected a motion to outlaw the cat hunt. The Swiss government says there are around 1.5 million stray cats in Switzerland, and it points to a British study which shows that cats kill 15 birds each per year. Staying with cats, and a woman from Indiana in the USA who shot what she thought was a bobcat that had been attacking her own cats was surprised when it turned out to be a leopard. The owner of the local wildlife rescue centre that specialises in big cats denies it's his. If you'd prefer to see a live leopard as opposed to a dead one, then why not click on the link to see our How to Release a Leopard film, made all the better because Charlie nearly soils himself. Our own Roy Lupton has been appearing on ITV News this week. Roy was talking about the urban fox problem after ITV Meridian used our night vision footage of urban fox calling in Maidstone Town Centre. The report also featured a fox expert who suggested that walking a dog around the edge of your garden will keep foxes at bay. You're yeah, right. Schools Challenge TV is offering a competition prize this week you can win a family ticket to the CLA Game Fair. Click on the link on the screen to watch this week's show, which tells how Schools Challenge Academy members plan to take their shooting careers to the next level and bid for Olympic success. And finally, these South African tourists got a bit of a surprise when this angry giraffe started chasing them. Giraffes can run up to 35 miles per hour and have a lethal kick. You are now up to date with Field Sports Britain News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David. Very oriental. Now, the good news is, I got him. Later in the programme, we're going to do some real poaching in China. First duck. Peking duck, crispy fried duck, no decoy duck, because China is where they're all made. It is hard to put into words how urban China is becoming, and in such a short time. Cities I've never heard of before, such as Ningbo and Guangzhou, are already like a cross between Wolverhampton and Gotham City. All right, so that racket in the background, this is where your duck decoys come from. I'm here to meet Frank, who's going to tell me all about it. I fly to Europe each year, one time, two times. So I see the chain store, I see the shops, and I got some idea from them. Then I'm back to China and I make, make my, my uh, lines for the hunting. How many of these are you shifting every year? Uh, half a million pieces here, normally. Totally together. Like uh, goose, uh, prawn, pigeon, and uh, magpie, and uh, uh, ducks. That's goose, crow, pigeon, magpie, and ducks. It's not just deeks. Frank's company makes float tubes for fishermen and even standalone high seats. It's all too much for keen deer stalker Eric. He has to go and try it out. It's meant to cope with one ton of weight. However, Eric may need to go easy on the wontons as he breaks the ladder on the way up and has to use the other high seat ladder to come down. Back to the drawing board with that product. If you are planning to order around half a million decoys and you want to find out more, visit MaitaiSports.com. Now, from a beautiful beach resort to the high hills of Canton, where I'll be going pheasant poaching.
Picture a group of country blokes sitting down to a good breakfast before going out for a bit of walked up shooting. That's what we have here. There is lots of chat about what we might see, what pheasants look like, what eagle tastes like, and that, needless to say, we should have been here last week. How do Eric and I establish that we know how to shoot a muntjac when we see one? We show them films of Roy Lupton, of course. They tell us they mainly shoot pheasants here, but there is a variety of game. That is a leopard cat, which is common across China, India and the rest of Asia, and is fond of farm chickens. In the 1950s there were tigers here. Locals say the government came and shot them all. But it is hard to see how. There is plenty of game in the tangle of bamboo. The rural China you see is hacked out of thick undergrowth. There's an awful lot of China you don't see. The guns our hunter friends use would not pass muster at a British shoot. Outside they proudly show off a heavily repaired Manny France No. 5 robust shotgun and a single barrel homemade hammer gun, both of them 12 bore. Cartridges range from 3 shot to 7.5. We load up into vehicles and head out into the countryside. So we are hunting here in Canton province. And these guys are out after meat, so we're turning down the really little birds and going for the bigger ones. At first we drive around local farmland looking for birds. When we see one we stop the cars and one of the two shooters hop out and have a go. Any biggish bird will do, like this, a common bird in the rice paddies, a brown crake. Now, as you've probably noticed, they ask us to blob out their faces and they're not keen to be interviewed. I think they are unclear about whether or not shooting is legal in this province in the eyes of the police or the government. But if you do go shooting, nobody else bats an eyelid. Oh yeah, it was unbelievable. You would expect some of the farmers to just show up with the strange people just running all over, our land, over their lands. Especially with us, with the camera and the dogs and everything. Uh, there was absolutely no reply. And even if we passed them, they were just very friendly and maybe a little bit afraid of guns, <laughs> but no, it was really, really positive. At last we hit the trail of the bird we have come to see, the pheasant, which of course comes from here in China. The guys make their way across the field and a volley of shots follow our soon-to-be lunch. The dogs leave the bird for our hunter to retrieve, who is very pleased with it. This pheasant au naturel is nothing like a Michigan blue, but a subtle brown. It isn't going to matter what colour it is in a few minutes. After that, it's time for me to have a go, and I think there's a 50-50 chance that I'm going to go the way of that last pheasant. I hope the string and sealing wax will hold. Thankfully, I'm in one piece, as is the pheasant I've just shot over. We both live to fight another day. It was a very challenging shot there, didn't you think? Um, but I watched it from the side, it looked easy, but probably if you were standing behind that very short side by side, it, it actually probably was very difficult. I would like to come back here with a reliable 20 bore, a mixture of six shot and buckshot cartridges in case of larger game, a couple of British gun dogs, a bird book so I can point out to the locals what I want to shoot, and a butterfly book so I can identify the dozens of fabulous insects that I will see. I would like to spend a week walking the paddy fields of China in among this gorgeous scenery. I ask Eric how he reckons a continental would shoot this, he being both hysterical and continental. First of all, I think overcome certain, certain taboos. And because you'd be shooting Moonjack with a, with a shotgun, but also certain challenges. You have to walk up much, much closer towards, for example, the Moonjack to be able to, to kill it. The rough shooting I found very interesting. I think if you are there in the right, right season, we saw a lot of tracks, both of pheasants, of Moonjack, uh, we saw a lot of quail, so um, it could be really interesting for rough shooting. Yeah. The quail are exactly what I would like to shoot, but the locals consider them to be a waste of a cartridge. The dogs are peculiar, they have an inscrutable calm about them, but then suddenly burst into action. But the dogs are not much good at retrieving game, even with the encouragement of the shooters who regard any bird lost in that deep thicket a personal failure. At last we stop at a collective farm for lunch with the workers. This kind of generosity is normal, charming and it only costs a few bob. 
The Chinese are very much in touch with what they eat. In rural areas like this, you are woken each morning at 4am by the squeals of whatever is on tonight's restaurant menus. If you can turn up at a remote farmhouse with fresh game, all the better. We shoot a brace of crake, five pheasants and a pigeon. We turn down several coveys of quail. If anyone offers you walked up shooting in countryside like this, you have got to do it. Now for some bushcraft. It's the Chinese Bayberry season, known locally as Yang Mei. One thing Eric insists is that as a European you can like the Chinese, laugh with them, eat well with them, but do not expect to understand them. Like every developed country in the world, they have plenty of competing religions. The main two in this area are Taoism, which gives us yin, yang and several martial arts, and Buddhism, which gives us nirvana, and I don't mean the one with Kurt Cobain. Well, I'm off to pick berries in the woods with the sunniest girl in China, Sunshine Sun. And now this, 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 this tree is our family trees and uh, you can enjoy it. After the frantic few days of travelling around the country hunting, bayberry picking, just like blackberry picking, is gentle and therapeutic. Sunshine is proud of her family trees and passionate about the fruit, as are most people in this part of the country. Everywhere you go, there are people balancing baskets over their shoulders, carrying the fruit to market. Once again, it's all about the food. I ask if this has anything to do with the starvation the Chinese went through under Chairman Mao. Everyone says no. Food has been a Chinese passion for centuries. How many of the baskets do you get every year? Uh, uh, yes. How many baskets like this of fruit? Fruits. Uh, uh, there is. Uh, uh, it's uh, about uh, 30, 30 trees. Uh, all of my family in, on this hill. One hill. My family has two hills have young may trees. Sorry. Why? Thank you, Sunshine. Sorry to interrupt. Chinese bayberries are called Yang Mei. We eat them wherever we go and they are delicious. Sweet yet sour. Sweet and sour. There's an idea. Now we've shot birds, we've shot mammals in China. The one thing that's missing is fish. We're going fishing. If hunting and shooting is somewhere between banned and reluctantly allowed, fishing is a major national pastime, and once again, it comes down to food. If you are getting a picture of the people who like eating game, just wait till they get their chopsticks and their chops around fish. And when a restaurant advertises fresh fish, it means fresh fish. I've come to meet Chen An. He's a factory boss who likes nothing more than a morning float fishing for carp. I meet him thanks to his sister, Lily, who speaks English. What is the fish food made from? Uh, the rice. Yeah. Made from rice? Yeah, rice. And does it have any flavour? Mm -hmm. Does it have flavour like meat flavour? Meat flavour? Yes. Uh, no flavour. No flavour, just yeah. rice. Yeah, yeah. I want to ask Mr Chen if he gets first dibs at the newest fishing equipment on the market because it all comes from China. But perhaps he is a businessman first and a fisherman second because he reckons I want to make a deal on a new rod. <laughs> Uh, if you if you want to find some fish equipment, uh, he can prove some information. The main the main uh, factory is to produce this equipment in Shandong Weihai. Yeah. Is that here? No, Shandong Province. Shandong. Province. Shandong. Yeah, yeah. Fishing is huge in China. Public parks in Chinese cities have lakes, and those lakes have fishermen. These lads are fishing right in the middle of Ningbo, population 5.7 million. I ask Philip the translator to ask what they are fishing for. What's that? Corrosion. 
Crucian, Crucian, Crucian Carp. That will be Crucian Carp then. Back at Mr Chen's pond and the temperature has risen to just short of 40 degrees centigrade. That's over 100 degrees Fahrenheit. You can see why the Chinese like a sport that involves sitting still, even though he gallantly gives up his seat in the shade to his sister. Now it's Eric's turn to fish. The heat may be dulling our mammalian senses, but the carp are as sharp as ever. Nearly got one. It was a little bit quick. And it might, we, the response needs to be faster, but in this hot weather it's not easy. Then it goes right for Eric, and he is into his first Chinese crucian. Now it's my turn to get the wrong end of the stick. So he likes hunting, he, yeah. like, he likes the idea yeah. of hunting, but he can't go hunting because of the current situation. Would he like to see change? He likes the hunting, uh, but uh, the government request uh, from uh, close the hunting place during each April to October. Okay. Yes, and uh, uh, at, the, at this time, during this time, uh, the, the guns need to uh, take the, in the police, police station. Okay, so, yeah. he, so he can go hunting? Yeah, he can. Now this is a country of a billion plus people. Around a quarter of the world's population is Chinese. The government here tolerates fishing, but it says that hunting, shooting, guns are banned. That's not what I've found. Just look at the restaurant menus. They go from pheasant through deer to almost anything you can pull out of the water, right up to whale meat. And I have to say the jellyfish was rubbery. Now, you don't need a game meat marketing executive here because everybody wants to eat everything. It's probably a good thing that the government doesn't encourage hunting any more than it does, otherwise there'd be nothing left. However, this is a country that loves its field sports. Right, my go. Mr Chen sets me up and I get to sit in zen-like fisherman's trance, at one with my float, feeling slow disintegration of ball of rice on the sharp little hook. And I'm in. And Chinese feeling, but that is a really wonderful moment. First Chinese car. It's been a glorious, sweltering day. With rod in your hand, you can forget the smog and horror of life in urban China. And Mr Chen has plenty of fish to give to his friends. Of course, we don't have a monopoly on making hunting films about China, even though we reckon we're probably the first. Let's have a look at the rest of them on Hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting, shooting and fishing videos that YouTube has to offer. This week, concentrating on China. El Dorado of Chinese hunting is the Mongolian steppe. Inner Mongolia is part of China. There are lots of films on YouTube about locals using golden eagles to hunt wolf and fox right across Mongolia and into Kazakhstan. Israel Phila spends a few days with a falconer to make this film. Hainan Island is located in the South China Sea and is China's southernmost province. The Li people, native to the island, hunt python and pig in the forests here. Here's a home video of another of the chow type dogs we saw actually doing some work. This one is catching a large rat somewhere in southern China. You can't cover Chinese fishing without putting cormorant fishing into the search box. This film is a straightforward story about men using birds to catch fish and even the BBC can't get it too badly wrong, apart from pointing out that the birds are slaves. And what the BBC does get right is superb underwater footage. There's quite a lot of good sea fishing in China, but not many good sea fishing videos. The more interesting film I have picked shows electro fishing in a river. The guys here are floating car batteries on inner tubes behind them. They fish along the bottom of the river, electrocuting as they go. I have seen this done elsewhere in Asia, where the fishermen save power by only electrocuting certain known lies. The Chinese are superbly resourceful. Here is a news story about how they've trained foxes to catch rats that are destroying pasture lands. The presenter points out that foxes are cheaper than rat poison. Now, is there a European sporting agent operating in China, I hear you demand? Well, this Spanish operator claims to show Argali sheep hunting in China. Chinese hunters we met told us that Northwest China and Inner Mongolia are the two great paradises for hunters with game including deer, bear and wolf. They were unclear about how legal this is and they were vague about the methods, mentioning everything from knives to dogs to AK-47s. Finally, let's go back more than a hundred years to this extraordinary film from French Indochina which shows buffalo hunting by white-clad colonialists in pith helmets. This was filmed not far by Chinese standards from where I had my pheasant outing. You can click on any of these films to watch them if you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly topic send it in via YouTube or email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. 
Well, I'm on the beach for a well-earned break after all that hard hunting, but not for long because we are back next week. And if you're watching this on YouTube, please don't hesitate to hit the subscribe button that's somewhere around the outside of the screen or go to our webpage, fieldsportschannel.tv, where you can click to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, or scroll down to the bottom of the page, pop your email address into our constant contact box. And there's a special incentive this week. If you can tell me the time code in this show where you saw my friend the panda, then you will be entered into a draw to win the panda. This has been Yi Chi Tai Chen.